um, uh, like, uh, like twice. Um, people like the, the classes that are offered and I'd say generally the sense I got was that people felt that there was a good um, sort of array of electives to take um, and a good balance of electives and academic courses. Okay. So this is our slide about community. Um, so there were like a, a lot of really, really positive comments about the teachers at NHS and the other staff. And I tried to include as many as I could here, but like there were so many more. And I just really think that's important to say. Uh, people really love the teachers and then also just like the, their community of friends. Uh, so I think that's great that our students are so happy about that. But I did see like I put in some negative feedback. It was just, I mean, it was just those four that I saw in my section. But the one that I did think was interesting was that someone put as negative feedback, it was like being welcoming. So I think that is something that we really pride ourselves on in Northampton, but I thought it was interesting that that student didn't find that as a strength. Okay. Mm. So flex feedback, it was a lot of people wanting more of flex. So just for anybody that doesn't know, flex is like our time in the middle of the day. That's kind of like study block, but you can go to any teacher um, that you are currently taking a class with um, and you like non you're not moving forward in the curriculum you're just getting help with stuff that you've already been learning um, so yeah I think generally the feedback about flex was very very positive positive. and that's kind of new um, as of a couple years ago I believe um, yeah another thing we got a lot of feedback on uh, was the grading system um, so obviously there's been a lot of, you know, changes to the recent grading system. Um, so I think a big portion might be people getting used to it. Uh, a common complaint that I saw was just the inconsistencies uh, between courses, right? This is something that we actually we talked about at the last, um, at the last presentation that we did. Um, but there isn't one consistent grading policy between all the classes, but instead each department has its own grading policy and those differ from each other in a lot of ways, um, different grades. So it's, we're kind of using, it's some, some departments are using like a hybrid standards-based grading system, and some of those standards are valued differently. So some classes, a, a proficient might be an 88, some classes is an 85, um, some, some it's a 90. Um, and just those differences that aren't very clear, aren't very communicated. Some just have a anywhere from the 75 to 
And then here are some more grading things. People talked a little bit about the embedded, the embedded honors policy, um, which is just in the math department. Um, students are in honors. Honor students and non-honor students are in the same classrooms. Um, yeah. And the math department, I think, has this particularly polarizing uh, grading system. So I think a lot of the grading feedback was about the math department specifically. OK, and then there was a little bit, but not very much feedback about administrative communication, um, people feeling like their 504s might not have been honored. Um, or people feeling kind of excluded or and other things like that. And we don't want this to be like allegations, um, but we thought we would include it because there was some feedback about that. Um, but yeah, there was very, very little in general. I don't know. This is just like some, oh, this is just like some positive feedback that I thought I should include. I don't know. <laughs> just about how they like the library and I don't know. <laughs> I just thought I would include it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there was a lot of positive feedback with this, and I'm glad we often ask, you know, like for problems, and I'm really glad that we asked what people liked about NHS as well, because um, it was nice to see that people like enjoy a lot of aspects of, of going to school there. So, yeah, I don't know if we have time for questions. I know we're running really late. <clears throat> we should, if anybody has questions. Do you want to stop sharing so I can see the yes. screen? Okay, um, Member Stein. Um, thank you so much for uh, for going to us, and it's really great to see the feedback and the handwriting and and the candidness and a lot of the remarks. So it's really fun for us to see it as well. Um, I had a a question for you about the, the bathroom situation um, that you mentioned, and I'm wondering. You know, my understanding is there's been sort of a, a reset at the school regarding school culture, behavior issues, etc., and that the bathrooms, as you notes indicated, were an area of, uh, of concern related to that. I'm wondering if you've seen a change in the last few weeks in the bathrooms availability or the issues that are going on in the bathroom or any sort of shift yet in, in how that's going. Did anybody get, were you able yeah. to that? Yeah, so, so he's basically, basically asking, asking whether or not, um, so like there was like a reset at the end of the semester and he's asking whether or not we've seen a change in the bathrooms after that time. So I, I do have an answer to yeah, that. Yeah, I do. Um, I just, okay, so it's really hard to regulate the bathrooms and I know that uh, the administration is doing their best to possibly handle it. But I will say I have only noticed it getting worse. Um, in second semester, the bathrooms are more dirty. And I go in there uh, really often. And uh, just like earlier this week, there was only one bathroom in the entire school, girls' bathroom, that was uh, unlocked. And that's because of vandalism. So it's like there's not really much they can do if the bathrooms are unclean and unfit for use. So I, I do understand that. But I will say that since the semester started, I have noticed a difference. And it's, they've been much less clean. And uh, I think the situation's gotten slightly worse, probably prompting that reset being attempted as well. Um, yeah, I definitely just have to agree with Zara in that regard. Um, it, yeah, it's, it seems to be steadily getting worse, kind of, and it fluctuates. But I think what happens a lot um, is that Bathrooms get closed for whatever reason, right? They're, they're too messy, they need to be cleaned. Um, and then all, the, all, that, all those kids who are skipping class or vaping kind of get consolidated into one or two bathrooms. And then the bathrooms that are open go from being just bad and uncomfortable to borderline unusable for someone who's actually trying to use the bathroom. And, and just to add on to that, like, <laughs> They're, they're really unusable, and a lot of times they have so many people in them that it's, there's like two times that are pretty much impossible to use the bathroom in, that's flex and second period. The second period is when lunches are, and like, it's, it's seriously like 20 people in a bathroom. So, very small space. Thank you for your question. Do you have any other questions or comments? 
I just have one other question about the guided portion that they mentioned. Um, and I was curious, I was trying to read all the notes, and I, I didn't know if you had a, a sense having read them all, if, um, like, like, if the, like the issue was there wasn't enough access to counselors, if there wasn't enough counseling support, like what, if you had to describe like the key issues that pe most students reported, like what, what were they? Because it seemed like there was a lot there. Yeah, yeah I, think I think a big, a big problem, problem is, is kind of like you were saying, saying is access, is access and, and that definitely, definitely has, has to do with the number of guidance counselors. Um, there's, I, I know that there's very few guidance counselors as is and that they're very overworked within their regards and they're dealing with their students. And then also there's um, the resources for students with IEPs or 504s um, who get access to counselors who are maybe more for uh, mental health or like stress level stuff. Um, and I know that they're also overworked and there isn't really an option for people who don't have an IEP or 504 if they want to seek like counseling that isn't related to like a school issue um, that doesn't really exist in the school. Uh, and it's very hard to go to your guidance counselor because um, especially when it's the season of college applications or course selections or anything school related, which is almost always um, they always just have a lot on their plate to deal with. Yeah, and adding on to that, the season of college applications and course selections, like college applications takes up the entire first semester basically, and then course selection starts like a week ago, like a week into second semester, and kind of the process lasts all the way until the school year ends. So the guidance counselors are like super busy as it is, and seeing anyone for just, for like, just like immediate, immediate support, support is it's kind of impossible honestly just due to the lack of resources and they are doing their best so thank you so much any other questions or comments i'll just say thank you so much for the thoroughness and the honesty and also just putting everything in context that really appreciate that it helps us understand what's happening on the ground. Okay. Thank you for being here and for your patience with the technology as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, could I? Oh, please, go. Uh, if, I, if I don't, if you guys don't mind. So um, we are in the process of doing the strategic plan for the district for the next five years. And there has been a survey that's been released. And so far, I think uh, 48 students have actually um, completed the survey so if you all can get the word out that this is an opportunity to so they they've answered this survey so they can replicate some of those thoughts into the three questions that we've put forward that would be very very helpful okay, okay. yeah I, I we've definitely been trying to do that I yeah I, I know at the open house we did a fundraiser I'll talk about it in a second but we did have like a QR code we were telling people to fill it out Thank Great. You. Thanks. Thank you. All um, right. Oh, Monica. Sorry. Member Labonte. Yeah. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I wanted to uh, let you know that I'm going to be um, taking over the Booster Club because it sort of has been non-existent this past year, and so I will be reaching out to groups like the Student Union and other places to talk about how we can partner and how we can get students involved, as well as parents and sports team so uh, just be looking for my name <laughs> because I'll be outreaching to see how we can work together thank you hey well that ends our portion of the Student Advisory Council meeting do we need to sign out or do we uh, just yes, go for we do need to okay do I need a motion I, would someone make a motion to I'll adjourn make a, make a motion to adjourn student. member Gacy I second. Advisory Council. And Member Hennessy seconds it. Could we have a roll call, please? Member Gazy. Yes. Member Foster Cannon. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, maybe I muted too quick. <laughs> Thank you. Member Seraphy Cox. Yes. Member Stein. Yes. Member Hennessy. Yes. 
Mem uh, Member Labonte? Yes. Member Agna? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, switching gears. Good evening. Welcome to the February 15th, 2024 Northampton School Committee meeting. I am Gwen Agna, the Vice Chair of the School Committee, and I will be presiding tonight in the absence of the Chair as this meeting was rescheduled to a time that the Chair has another commitment. I apologize to everyone who has tuned in and hoped that we had started at 6.30 for the regular School Committee meeting. We had major technology issues, which is often the case, but this one, these were better, I mean, more than the others, for sure. And we have new screens, but we're not quite up to speed. This meeting is being held both remotely on Zoom pursuant to the modification of the state's open meeting law for the pandemic and in person here in the community room at JFK Middle School. This meeting and all participating will be audio and video recorded. I will begin by asking Michelle to call the roll of the school committee. Member Shara. Member Gazy. Yes, present, whatever. Member Foster Cannon. Present. Member Serafi Cox. Present. Member Stein. Present. Member Hennessy. Present. Member Miller. Member Labonte. Here. Member Agna. Present. Member Davis. Present. Do you have a quorum? Thank you. The following members are participating remotely over Zoom. Member Stein and Member Foster Cannon and Member Seraphie Cox. So we will open with um, our student representative. Oh, no, we're not going to open with our school committee norms before. Member Gacy. Um, we had talked last time about trying to use the norms that we got laminated in a way that might help reduce the times of our meetings, et cetera. And um, so we decided, so Member Agna and I worked on them on sort of a scoring system. Um, we came up with a zero for doesn't meet the standards, one partially meets the standards, two meets the standard, or the idea or whatever. So a zero to two thing. We thought that what we could do was take these little dry erase markers that we have and score zero to two on these and then give them to the clerk to tally anonymously. Um, for members who are on Zoom, they could send their tallies to um, Michelle as well. And um, then what we would do is for each little section or each little category, we would um, put the raw tally, like how many, let's see, how did it work? Uh, how many for each number? Add columns to the norms to reflect how many members checked each score and also an average score for the norm. Mm -hmm. uh, we had agreed we would read all of the norms this time, mm -hmm. just to get it in our heads. Mm -hmm. And then after that, mm -hmm. we would lift up the lowest scoring norm. And at the beginning of the next school committee meeting, uh, spend five minutes with a timer or three minutes, whatever you want, brainstorming ways that we can improve in this area. Um, any other questions with that? Oh, should I read these babies? Yes. Okay. Uh, so there, the first column is how we communicate. Utilize brevity to use our meeting time well. Watch airtime, speak and listen. If you agree, say so and move on. Two, clarification. If you wonder, ask. Three, come with an open mind. Be open to change based on new ideas or perspectives. Next, respectfully challenge the idea, not the person. Patience, patience, patience. Uh, 
Last one is actively res and respectfully listen to, consider, and build on shared ideas and perspectives. The other column is how we work together. Come prepared, review all folder items, pass discussions and actions on agenda <coughs> topics prior to each meeting. Next, focus on students at the center. How does what we are discussing impact all students? Uh, next, agendas are reflective of our goals and are reasonable in scope and time. They include a clear and specific action with accompanying materials. Uh, <laughs> next one, each of us is responsible for ensuring we clearly understand what we are voting on and indicate when we feel ready to do so. And finally, follow through on committee uh, commitments. Great. So. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions from the committee? Um, I have to look at my Zoom to see if there are I any would answers. just say for those of you oh. here that, you know, for this column, do the left side, mm -hmm. not column. Do, do the, the right side. side. Um, Member Stein? Um, uh, Member Beaton just answered my question by her description, so I'm Thank you. Brevity. Yes, and we'll leave time at the end to do your scoring um, before we adjourn. Okay, let's move on. And um, where is my little script? Sorry. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. Now we're moving on to the student representative report. Zara Osman, thank you. Okay, um, hi, I'm Zara Usman, and I am the student representative from the NHS Student Union. Okay, um, so I briefly mentioned in the Student Advisory Council meeting that um, the Student Union, we held a candle sale, and we partnered with Prosperity Candle. It was on the day of the open house, so a week ago today, uh, and it was very successful and very fun, and we're going to be having another candle fundraiser yeah, on the first day of March. So, yeah, for students this time, not for parents. <laughs> um, we just had a fire drill today. It was very cold. <laughs> um, but uh, it was probably the most efficient one we've had this year. And I don't know, for my time at NHS, definitely the most efficient one. Um, and as I also mentioned earlier, the course selection process is beginning. And 10th graders have had meetings that, that I know for sure, I think, Everyone else in the school has also had meetings. Um, and the ninth graders took their bio MCAS at the beginning of the month. And um, just half of them, the other half will take it, it in June. Um, the Black Student Union has been doing announcements with like little fun facts for Black History Month. And I personally have been really enjoying them. They're really fun. Um, and uh, the school musical is it on March 14th, 15th, and 16th, and 17th. So yeah, you guys should definitely go. It's gonna be fun. Um, spring sports registration opened relatively recently before our previous meeting. And um, as I think Dr. Bonner mentioned, or no, no, uh, Member Stein mentioned, uh, we had a reset with uh, the beginning of the semester, uh, and that like has included uh, like more punishments with like lunch detentions for skipping. Um, that seems like a harsh word, but repercussions, let's say. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the news I have. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments for Zara? Uh, Zara, thank you for changing that word, uh, repercussions yeah. or interventions. Yeah, I didn't know what to use. As them. opposed to the, the punitive method there, yeah. or the reset. Yeah. And for those of you who are wondering what this reset is, there is a document in which, um, uh, I don't want to steal uh, the principal's thunder, but it really was to uh, recognize that there has been some challenges, and it wasn't just, just this year, but there has been some challenges and some changes that have happened at the high school um, and it's due to the very fact that there's been leadership changes um, and and so uh, even changes in terms of our SROs presence 
um, and the focus on restorative practices. And so the reset was a, a communication that went out from the principal, uh, from the administration, really talking about some of the changes and how to really address some of the concerns in which were mentioned today. And so that's the document that uh, is being referred to. Thank you for that addition. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, we'll move on to our Northampton High School Spotlight and Principal Worley. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to thank uh, Dara and Ellie and Tyler for, for, for their work with the Student Union. Uh, we meet uh, regularly with the cabinet of the student union and always appreciate their insight and their willingness to work with us on thinking about how to uh, make things work better for students. So tonight uh, for our spotlight, um, I did what a good principal does and punted and <laughs> sent it over to the um, video production crew in class and uh, asked uh, Jeremy Whalen, um, there's a Fabulous job with the transcript. If you haven't seen the transcript, you need to find that uh, and take a look at the weekly news magazine. And um, so they put together a, a five-minute video uh, about Northampton High School, and uh, share that with you now. And um, I'll share my screen, and run the video, and it'll all work. So this one we're going to so I'm going to have to turn it back. Okay. Unmute your. Okay, you ready for that? Okay. Try mine. When, when you shared it, did you click on the little tiny box that says share the audio from the clip? That's what you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> so if you unshare your screen and then reshare it, if you reshare it on the box, uh, there will be a dialog box that pops up and there will be a like a check mark that you can check if it says share audio. Is Okay, can you turn up your volume? And the microphone, the microphone's off. I don't think so. Are you muted yourself? Yeah, if you, if you turn down your audio on the, then the people in the room won't be able to hear, but I, um, or turn off the mic. Thank you. 
Time of year. Um, I also would offer a solution that somebody, uh, a school committee member who is not in the room could share it that way, and there, I don't think we would have the same feedback issue. And then the sound should be all the way up so you can hear me now. Knowledgeable, competent, creative, empathetic, and responsible individuals. Northampton High School is committed to preparing versatile, well-rounded students ready to function in a diverse local society. We are committed to engaging all students in a range of high-quality educational experiences and opportunities that will assist in the development of necessary skills while becoming knowledgeable, competent, creative, empathetic, and responsible individuals. As a 21st century learning community, we encourage students to be innovative, independent, critical thinkers, and collaborative problem solvers who contribute to the school and the community. One important One part of our mission, of our mission as, a as a school is to bring students bring together, together and help them, help them learn how to be, how to be adults. adults. But then really but then importantly, really importantly uh, a, a lot of the, work, lot of the we work we do is, is teaching, teaching students how to think. How to think. So, so content, content is, is easy to find easy now. To find now. If, you if you carry around a supercomputer in your pocket, pocket. The, question the question is, do you know whether you know those whether answers, answers are authoritative? Are authoritative. Can you put, can you together, put together information, information and, and create and something, create something new. new? Can you solve, can you solve problems? problems? We offer a we dynamic, offer a dynamic curriculum, curriculum that encourages natural curiosity, natural curiosity and effective and communication, communication and further and provides, provides a practical, practical foundation, foundation for, success for success in the world. In the world. I really I enjoy, really the, enjoy um, the, um, many different many classes, different classes we, have. we have. Like, like that students, that students can, can have not have only in the arts, but also like maths and technology English. Just the variety we offer. We have, we have students who, who um, are, are interested, interested in pursuing, pursuing that, that higher education, and, and, and we, have we have students who are thinking about how they're going to use their high school education as, as a jumping off point to a career, and, and, and we, we have, have a lot, lot of um, businesses, businesses in the community that support our internship, internship program. program, and so we have all, all kinds of different uh, pathways for students and, and all, all different, different kinds of learning, learning happening, happening here. here. We value, we value the opportunity, the opportunity for, for students, students to develop, develop a strong voice in school policy making and programming. Students, students are encouraged to make healthy and safe life choices as they relate to future endeavors. There's two leadership uh, opportunities for students uh, that are really important to the school. So we have class officers who uh, work with the class advisors and really think about the uh, school spirit. Um, and then uh, um, we also have a student union, which is uh, really designed to look, look at, at the practices and policies so they're, they're, they're sort of the, sort of the a, a much more, a much more um, uh, governance oriented group and so, and so we meet uh, they, uh, they meet with the, with the administrative, administrative team, team on a regular on basis and they bring forward, forward concerns and ideas, ideas of, uh, of uh, uh, student body um, and, um, and, and things that they think that we need to be attending to and it's it's really a great opportunity for us to hear from and respond to what students experience at school is extracurriculars have been a big part for me especially President of the Indy Club, co-president of the Ceramic Club, since it gives me a chance to hang out with my friends in a school setting. If you really love making art, but you don't have enough time during the day, we have that extra time during flex and after school to just like do the things you want. Northampton High School recognizes the need for a safe and supportive environment and works diligently towards achieving that goal. My advice for new students. Be, try, try anything, anything and everything, and everything you, you think like. you'd like.
obviously, obviously like, you can like take the classes, take the classes you, need you need to take, to but, take but definitely, definitely explore, explore those, those other classes, classes, classes that like you might not be, able, might not to be able to explore after, after high school. school. So, so, so when I when stand, I stand on the stage at graduation and think, think about what it means to hand a student a diploma and shake their hand, I think about not just academic learning, but the skills and the attitudes that they're pairing off very well with them. Thinking about the world beyond themselves and being an engaged citizen, I think a big part of our work here is to provide students with the skills, knowledge, and experiences that they feel ready to do that when they leave and take their diploma. Thank you, Principal Worley. I feel like we need to clap on that one. Do we? <laughs> thanks, Ellie. And thanks, Jeremy, and everybody else who's involved. I saw Suzanne Strauss's name, too. Great. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Principal Worley? Member Labonte. Um, I have one comment and one question. Um, I loved reading about the pathways. Thank you for that information. I thought it was fabulous. It's so wonderful to see all that opportunity and, and how that works with the community. I just thank you for sharing that information. I really liked reading it. Um, and then I have a really sort of odd granular question. And that is, uh, and I was looking at sort of graduation requirements, and it talked about history, but the classes needing to be sequential, like American History One, American History Does that mean there's a, a base, but then you have to sort of keep taking American history? Because I noticed there's very interesting other history classes. Can you, does it have to be sequential, literally sequential, or are you allowed to sort of take um, a variety to meet that requirement? Okay. But those two. Okay, that other, that last, okay. That's right, I wondered how. Big the sequence was that you had. Thank you. Do we have somebody else? Yes. So we have a little addition of American Dollar, which is work for us in the CMS. Great. Thank you. heard me speak before. I'm really excited to come and speak about um, the good work that my department has presentation that there's handouts to show you and I'll just go over a few highlights and leave you with the documents. Um, but so as I mentioned, one of the big things that we do is support students through post high school planning and college applications. And so a few just little numbers, um, tidbits for you. 76% of our seniors have applied to college this fall. 62%, um, 61.8% um, applied regular decision, 38.2% applied early decision or early action. It has 1,360 applications submitted by Northampton High School seniors this fall. A few numbers about recognition. 
counselors. So the counselors for us have written um, 146 letters um, for 209 seniors this year. It's actually a senior class for us. We have 240 students in the current ninth grade and our average is um, in between probably 230 seniors. About 2008 submitted to Northampton High School. The Northampton Counseling Department. That's the number that a teacher would write in three colleges. So that number's a different school council. Not many letters written. And then um, many hundreds of letters sent by teachers um, via the school counseling department. to just highlight some of the things that we do that um, if you might have a turn out of a school student or grade that we're doing it at. So we do meet with each of our students group setting at least three times a year. Um, we offer more targeted support um, both individually and through FlexSquad. School counseling department has been absolutely amazing in FlexSquad because it allows us to support students without taking class. Um, so we help students with college applications, financial aid, um, to enrollment, all kinds of different things during flex. We have information sessions to provide students um, who are interested in Smith College courses, scholarships, um, those kind of things. And then we have big um, kind of programs. So the integrators doing that right now um, come up to the high school and then plan high school beyond um, for your college applications. We work with students applying to community colleges, going to the military, going to work. Um, so we offer a variety of types of support for that. Some large groups, some small groups, some individual. Um, we occasionally um, had some field trips. We, some of the pandemic kind of shot us down, but we've been able to offer a few field trips last year and this year with the help of the Northampton Education Foundation and the PTO. I'm really grateful to their support. And then we do case management as well. Um, and there are some things behind the scenes that go on. So we have newsletters. Um, we have a newsletter that goes out every Monday. And then we have an occasional newsletter for students in grades not I don't know if any of you read Hello Hamp regularly, but I try to keep people up to date on what's going on in the counseling department there. So we have um, the most recent senior newsletter as well as the newsletter for ninth through eleventh grade. We do have multiple caregivers nights each year. Um, so we have an eleventh grade caregivers night that's coming up on March twenty fifth, thirty p.m. And then we typically have two caregivers nights for senior parents. So that's um, one about applications and one about financial aid. Um, we do a lot of scheduling. So we have a full day. We have nine students. Um, our enrollment has been pretty steady in the nine there. It's been around 100 except for a brief dip during the pandemic. And we have 291 requests for schedule changes just for semester two. So that does not include the fall. 291 requests for second semester. We have some visiting dates for new students who are coming from somewhere other than JFK, usually about percent of our students um, in the freshman class are from JFK, and then another 20-25% are from private schools, charter schools, um, homeschooled, other places. So um, I wanted to thank you all for coming to my program. Um, I really appreciate being able to share some perspective. And I hope to return with more time, a uh, bigger picture. Thank you very much, Karen. Really appreciate your yes. So, so I see, see that we have, we have a couple of hands, hands up. Um, um, Ms. Member Serafi Cox, do we have a comment or question? Yeah, can you take yeah. Member Stein first? I have issues going on here. Okay, okay Member, Member Stein. Stein. Um, I had a, a comment and a question. Um, it was really wonderful to see my fellow non-board member, Ellie, um, in such a great video that I'm sure he worked hard on. And uh, it was just, it was great. So thank you for that. And um, really awesome to see what the students are capable of producing. Um, and um, my question is about the, um, 
sort of a couple of the things that have come up in the student reports, um, you know, and I'm hoping you can maybe give us a sense of what the reset plan is um, and the messaging around that it wasn't something that we were able to see or understand. So if you could just give us a sense of what um, the current reset plan is, that would be really appreciated. Sure. So, so uh, a couple of things that we've been trying to do discuss a number of people. So really, the, the intent is as well as the team team and then, then there's track actions and things that can play with. Um, so, so the the, the um, emphasis has been, been on having, having really really focused on making sure the students are are in class, staying in class, and staying in class. So thinking about how they manage all classes, how they manage uh, uh, attendance, that they're all through our payroll and all the classes next to the party. Uh, we're skipping, and then that's and then they allow to come out, making sure that they pass. Uh, and it's it, some, some of it's as simple as keeping doors closed and not having uh, 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 students uh, sit uh, in the hall hallway or, or leave the classroom in groups, things that have been pretty common. And then they make our, our ability to know who uh, uh, actually in class, class, class is not in class. In class. Mm -hmm. If they're, they're not in class, class they are not in class. Uh, so that's, that's been a big, big part of really asking the teacher to to do their part in, in, in keeping keep the students in class and getting them learning. learning. Um, uh, another, another, another piece then. Uh, uh, then uh, so I think that's, that's, that's kind of the main thrust of it. And, and then we've been even most also like talking to the students. You know, our, our, we, have, we have 10 bathrooms, 10 mobile cell bathrooms, and three all the bathrooms. We have and so and it, it takes, takes two people at least, at least to monitor, to monitor lunch. lunch. So two for two hours a day, day there's two adults uh, uh, supporting the cafeteria. So it's really, really limited what we're able to, to do. Um, um, yeah, so that partnership, I think, that's really, really, really take, take the lead on working with students and holding um, them keeping them engaged uh, uh, and uh, uh, accountable for both being on I, I, I remember, remember hearing a lot of comments, comments that, that, that they can't, they can't hear. hear. Um, so, um, so I'm wondering if, if when we have, have someone speaking, speaking just move the mic closer. closer. I'm noticing some comments, comments in the chat. chat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, and unfortunately we're, we're supposed to have the chat, chat disabled, disabled, even though it's, it's been a way to communicate. Um, so, so I'm, I'm not paying attention to the chat, chat but, but if, if we could disable it, it's not something we can have at school committee. Anyway, so we, so we need to speak, to speak into, into the microphone. microphone. So, so member Sarah P. Cox. Yes, thank you. Um, I am curious um, how uh, the high school envisions utilizing the video that you made. I mean, it's it was great. I echo all of that. Um, and I'm especially thinking about in terms of using it to, you know, communicate to the broader community uh, about the great things happening at uh, the high school. Uh, yeah, so, um, the, so Lauren um, uh, Barry, our, um, I'm going to get her title wrong, school coordinator of family engagement. Family engagement, thank you, coordinator of family engagement has uh, taken the leadership on an initiative to create virtual school tours of each school. And I realized when when I was explaining this to someone that they, they pictured that as a camera walking through the hallways. Uh, I think what it's actually intended to be is uh, something that's, that expresses what the uh, what each of our school's unique character is. And so I don't think it'll be exactly this video, but He's a, a very talented group of um, uh, producers, and they can use this content and other content and put together uh, a piece that would be something that somebody, uh, well, for example, rising uh, ninth grade 
students and their families, but also students and families considering uh, coming to Northampton could, could, could see and just get a, a flavor for the school. So we, we will, there will be another generation of that video. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I, I, I really love this, and I love how you highlighted student voice so much in it. And I also, Karen, um, with respect to guidance, how important it is to remember and you recognize this, the work you do, because um, sometimes it does seem like scheduling and um, that takes up so much of your time, but the college recommendations um, for both teachers and counselors, how much teachers and counselors and administrators do outside of that regular school day that really makes students' lives so different. Um, and I think it's so hard to capture Northampton High School because I think it's amazing. I'm super biased. But I, I really do think it's amazing that you did it in the video without even mentioning sports, which to me, it's like another fantastic thing at the high school. So I like um, both Jackson Street and then now. I just, it makes me really proud to be part of the community. In my last comment, I'm going to be really quick. 75% come from JFK. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I just want to highlight that 25% um, and how we have, we have to attract that. Um, and how when we talk about budget and a low enrollment, how we have to really remember, remember that and talk about the video and how do we get people to the floor. You know? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to also just my comment that goes with the student council also that, that the fact that people trust and value the adults in the building, um, that the students reported that, that's really fantastic. I mean, it's hard with the bathrooms and hard with uh, vaping and all that other stuff, but I think the idea that there's this trust and appreciation for the adults is really important, and I, I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad to hear that. I just, I just want to thank uh, Phil uh, this evening. Thank you for taking the time to spotlight our flagship school, and also to recognize uh, one of our associate principals who is sitting beside him, Diane Baker, and uh, she's just a wave, and so thank you for being here, and we do have some of the staff yep. from um, the high school who is also in attendance, and thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. So, so those, those of you who are just tuning in, we are we started late because of technology issues, and so we're now to public comment. So we'll be taking public comment in person and over Zoom. There is a sign-up sheet, which I have now, for public comment. I will go through the names who have signed up. For those who are on Zoom, if you wish to make a comment, please use the raise hand feature. Please, Please turn, turn off, off your videos, videos unless you are a school, school committee person. You can, you can always, always submit a written written public, public comment, comment, which is equally part of the public record. To do so, please email it to northampton-school-committee at northampton-k12.us, and it will be sent to all school committee members. Before you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. The school committee does not respond during public comment, and it is the public's time to speak. So while your comments should be directed to the school committee, you will understand that we do not respond to them. There's a limit of three minutes per person, unless the language translation or accommodations for speech disability, speech-related disability is needed, in which case the limit is six minutes. A timer will be set to ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to speak. You have no obligation to use the full time. If you do, after the limit is reached, you will be asked to finish your sentence. The school committee re receives public comment for a maximum of 90 minutes. We will begin our public comment with Eric Carlson. Karen. Thank you. Eric. My hands are being just asked. That's okay. No. Eric and Karen. Yes. Thank you. Um, so my name is Erica Karen. I'm a resident of Hatfield. I teach in the school district. Um, so thank you. Uh, I like keep hearing from many inside and outside the school committee that higher ups in the city of Northampton have said that the MTS raises for our last collective bargaining negotiations, uh, essentially being the city budget's woes on Nate. 
I would like to remind the mayor, school committee, and city council that this was a collective bargaining agreement. This was a contract negotiated and mutually agreed upon by all stakeholders. This is our contract, not NACE's contract. It's everyone's contract. Placing blame one way or another isn't going to make millions of dollars here out of nowhere. Instead, it pits the school district against the city citizens. The devastating cuts to education in this city will not bring students to enroll in our school districts. It will increase class sizes, limiting the effectiveness of our teachers and what interventions we can use to assist all of our learners. This, in turn, will drive families to consider using school choice to other surrounding districts or send those families to private or charter schools. I would also like to remind everyone that the reason stakeholders agreed to this collective bargaining agreement was because the educators, and most notably the support staff, were being paid offensively less than almost every other district in the area. As a result, we were losing excellent qualified and invested members of staff because they couldn't always make ends meet on their salary. With cuts like this and the added pressure on the staff remaining, we will have attrition in our employment for different reasons. All of, All of this will simply encourage declining enrollment, enrollment which creates a vicious cycle of declining budgets and increased costs. I am not a financial expert, but I do know that families want to move to and enroll their students in schools that can provide the highest level of education and care for their students. We could be one of those districts. This deficit is not the fault of NACE. This comes from the top and the city needs to get creative in how it plans to budget for prioritizing education for the betterment of Northampton as a city and to do what's best for our students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, our next person, person in person is Jude, Jude Russo. Jade. 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 I'm sorry, Jade, Jade Russo. Russo. Excuse me. Uh, hello, my name is Jade Russo. I am a senior at North Kansas High School, and I'm a resident of Florence, Massachusetts. Uh, there's, uh, there's two things I wish to speak on today, but this is relating to the budget. And I've heard, I've heard uh, speculation, speculation that of the positions that have been said that would, would need to be cut and would need to solve the deficit, that there would, there would need to be at least one guidance counselor cut. I'm not sure how true this statement is, but I would just say that, like, like has been mentioned, they have a lot of work to do, and if anything, they would, they would need more staffing in order to properly better get everything done. That's, and, and the second I would like to speak on is the Green New Deal for schools. Um, uh, this came to the forefront of my mind when Principal Worley sent out the form two weeks ago about the strategic planning for the upcoming five years for the school on how to make the school better. And when I was looking at it, I said, what do you, what do you vision for North Hampton High School in the next five years? These five main demands of the Green New Deal proposed idea, I think is a better way to put it, for the Green New Deal for schools. Saving clean buildings, climate curriculum, climate disaster plans, pathways to clean jobs, and clean health and meals, I think would be great additions to this. So I ask you to support the resolution for the Green New Deal for schools. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, so, so if there is anyone remotely who would like to make a public comment, please raise use the raised hand function. Um, Josh Feldman, you can unmute and open your video. Thank you. Hey everybody, Josh Feldman. I'm a parent of three kids in the schools, a first grader, a fifth grader, and a sixth grader. Um, and I'm really grateful for school committee's leadership in a tough year. Um, and uh, connected to the budget crisis that we face, I want to encourage school committee to propose a counter budget that does not have the existing uh, deficit represented. And in turn, that would allow for city council to have a debate about overall city funding and a public forum for the conversation of if our city priorities are represented in overall city spending. Um, as the mayor shared in the last meeting, this is a national crisis for education where school districts across the country face similar uh, budget challenges. Um, and I'm dreaming about a Northampton that leads the way as a city that is a beacon of hope in a difficult time for public education and models creative solution making so that our students that you've heard from tonight 
and others can continue to thrive. Thanks Thank you very much, much Josh. Josh. Next, Next is, is Meg Robbins. Can I can unmute, unmute and open, open your video? Meg, Meg Robbins, you're, you're next. next. You can, you can unmute, unmute and, and open your video. Are you, are you, are you, are you having, having difficulty, difficulty doing that? that? Okay, okay, let's go to our, to our next person and then we'll come back to you, Meg, if, if you're still, still there. there. We, we have next is Joella Data Tarbuck Button Springfield. Is that correct? That's Welcome. a mouthful. Yes, yes my, name is, great. <laughs> my name is uh, Joella Tarbutton hyphen Springfield, like the town, and they call me Jada, those who love me. And I am uh, vice president of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association and um, also very involved with the, uh, in, in Emily. And actually, I have to tell you, this is my first time coming to one of these school committee meetings. I'm also a part of the Bridge Street um was a council, so I go there, and uh, that's how I think I've met Josh. And I last night um, at a War Three a neighborhood meeting, uh, a councilman at large, uh, Gary Perry, came to speak, and so I asked a question about the budget, and it was somewhat, uh, I would say, a little bit scary. What's going on? I have to also say that I um, am a licensed teacher. I've never thought taught in Northampton. <laughs> I've always taught in Springfield and I've lived here in Northampton almost 20 years. As a matter of fact, I had considered running for city council for Ward 3. So I'm here just listening to what's going on. Uh, I do participate, especially February. I do some read-ins, at least with the Bridge Street School. So, and I think I have uh, attended two real talk Northampton things at the uh, JFK and I was very impressed. So right now I'm just a uh, fly on the wall, but a very interested fly. And thank you for letting me speak. And uh, it's good to see some of the candidates who I met this summer who are on the school committee. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Joella. Joella. Uh, next we have, is Meg, Meg Robbins, Robbins available? Um, just, there was a message in the chat that she is unable to mute. I mean, unmute. 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 Okay. okay. I'm not <laughs> checking the chat, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, um, so so if she, I, don't I don't understand why she's fine. Can you try to unmute her? Okay. okay. Why? In the meantime, we'll go to Lila Neal Stuffy. Can I just speak in person? Is that okay? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> oh, yes, there you are. <laughs> I didn't know there was a sign up. So. Oh, no, that's fine. Yes, go for it. Okay, hi again, I'm Lila. Um, I live on Prospect Street in Benton. I go to NHS, um, where I'm a student yeah. union, and I also serve as the co-chair of the North Youth Commission, um, um, where, we, where we have, have a lot of discussions about, about the African uh, budget, um, um, including the different agenda, who answered many, many, many of our questions. very gracious, so I want to thank her for that. Um, um, and, and so, so last, last year, year when we were in the, the school position by the Youth Commission, we um, talked about the danger of taking money from, from non renewable sources. Um, um, and, and as, as all know, we don't always have, have um, um, expenses, creates a hole in the budget that will only get bigger. Um, and now I want to thank you for the consequences of using this kind of money. Obviously, along with a lot of other problems that are out of our control. Um, um, which are the current at, at the state level, and then I can deliver a lot of the as said. Um, and, and as, as well as said before, I'm very, very, very strong, strong support pushing to get the city to give the school more money. money. Um, and I think that that's ultimately the only way that we can get that we have to solve all the problems. Um, um, but I, but I want to urge the school committee to avoid it all costs and non non renewable funds because it will just make the problems that we have now. In terms of limited funding and limited cuts, worse in the future. Um, I understand completely the difficult decisions that have to be made regarding our our that pushing these decisions to make it much more painful for students and staff 
future. Um, and, and I, I use kind of renewable funds, which I've, I've seen in, in the first year budget is, is in the plan right now. now. Um, um, is dangerous and will affect our community ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Lila. Okay, okay, let's, let's see, see if we, if we can have, have Meg Robbins. Robbins. Are you, Are you available, available now? now? I, I just got a message from Meg saying that she may have to co-host me because I still can't unmute. I don't know. I don't think. I don't, I don't know if we, we can, can do that. that. She can't, can't unmute. unmute. Is, that, is that a problem? problem? Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, and I'm asking her to unmute, so it's not. Ask to unmute. Well, we, well, tried, we tried to fix, to fix this. this. Let's, Let's go, go to Zara. Zara. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're, You're here. here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I, I also do not. I know. I, know, I always forget this. Kind of sheet, sheet, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Um, um, I, I am Zara's and, and I am a tech grader, grader at NHS, NHS, and I am a member of the Union. But I'm speaking for myself, so I didn't mention any summary. Um. So first, so first of, all, of all, I think, I think we, all we all know that these budget cuts really, really aren't, aren't an option. option. Um, um, we've heard, we've heard about, about all the great things at NHS tonight from, from both the advisory, advisory council, council and the spotlight. spotlight. We've, talked, we've talked, talked about the great teachers, teachers we have, have great course offerings, offerings we have, extracurriculars we offer, all things, all things that make NHS a super, super special place to go to school. school. And, and uh, the, reality the reality is, is, is that if we keep having, having the same conversation about budget cuts year after year, with it gets the situation getting increasingly worse, we aren't, we aren't going to have those things, things anymore. So, so uh, we, talk we talk a lot about advocacy here in here Northampton, Northampton, and I think, and I think it's really important that, that as, as elected officials, you as, you as a body really, really advocate for the students. For the students. And, I, and I, I, heard I heard that in your meeting norms, norms and, and I think that there have just been so many great points, points mentioned tonight, tonight about uh, uh, by Josh Feldman presenting, presenting a budget to the city council, by Lila Neal Stuffy about working to get more money into our city budget. Um, and, and I, I, I'm not an expert on this. On this. I'm, I'm in meetings about this all the time on school council. I, uh, Mr. Worley gave, gave a great budget, uh, explanation, uh, presentation to, to us and, um, really, really outlined it quite well. Quite well so, so I did just want to say that, that. but, but mm. it, it, it's, these are, these, these, these are not an option for, for, for NHS to continue to be a competitive school. school. And, and I think that Ms. Karen really highlighted that as well in her explanation of the cycle that's going on with us losing money uh, to charter schools and school choice. Um, and the class sizes that are increasing, like I've noticed that personally um, in my time in Northampton Public Schools, my class sizes have just gone up tremendously. And I think that that's something that is really important that we focus on in the budget is making sure that we can at least maintain the state that we are at now and not keep having the same uh, discussion year over year. So I really, really implore you to uh, advocate for the students. Thank you. Thank you, Zara. Is it been fixed Meg, for Meg Robbins? Um, so I have Meg on speakerphone because she still could not unmute. Okay. okay. Um, Meg, can you turn down the volume on your? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Emily. I really don't know what happened with that. It's never happened before on Zoom, but thank you. Can you all um, hear her? Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Go ahead. Great. Meg. <laughs> Um, I'm Meg Robbins, Northampton, parent, grandparent to NPS alums and students, current students. I want to share that I think it's terrific that we're creating a strategic plan to guide our district goals and outcomes for our children's education. The last district strategic plan was developed 16 years ago by a small mayoral appointed group, and most of it, including a proposal to explore elementary school consolidation, was not implemented. A quote from that document written during the 2008 recession is eerily reminiscent of our 2024 current budgetary predicament, and I quote, that Northampton public schools are faced with an extraordinary challenge to continue to provide high quality educational services with ever increasing costs and with drastically reduced revenues, end quote. 
The opportunity to create a strategic plan we can all own, could and should, be a critical beacon for the future. I'm concerned, as are many in this city, about how we actively work as a community to do this inclusively and benefit from a whole city spectrum of lively and thoughtful input in that strategic planning. That the current process has been seemingly exclusionary, even mysterious, is not good for our city nor our children. There are many ways to conduct strategic planning for school districts to learn, share, grow, and create a solid and exciting goals-based action plan. From what we know, this closed door current process is not one of them. I would ask school committee members how many of you and your constituents were or are regularly informed and aware of each step of this process, be its agendas or its outcomes. One fundamental understanding of your work is that no member shall retain committee information or decisions that all members don't have. There's no hierarchy on a school committee. As an educational change coach, I've worked with many districts using a national school reform faculty back to the future protocol, which this committee was introduced to last December in a retreat, and whose staging questions seem to have been selected for the online survey we have been encouraged to complete if we want to be heard. In my experience, this protocol was never intended to be used as an individual online survey. It's a highly collaborative exercise that fosters great discussions with on-site groups who then have an opportunity to gallery walk what each group has posted and see where there are overlaps and ahas. It is a fabulous hands-on discussion focused way to work with community at the start of strategic planning. It allows us to springboard off what we see and hear. It gets us pumped up about what school can and should be. But using those prompts as an online individual survey, you're thinking that is the data that will suffice for community input is not. That 2008 strategic plan committee also shared what I believe our community still embraces, and I quote again, what we do know is that the economy has become a major challenge. How this challenge will be met remains to be seen. There are many who believe the challenge will be met through the education of our children. The development of a strategic plan is essential to preserve the community's core values for education, end quote. My question is, how will we know or embrace our community core values if our community is not an actively engaged part of the conversation? Thank you. Thank you. Is there, is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment? No. no. Okay, okay, we will close that section of our agenda, agenda and we will we are, we are going to move, move up the budget, the budget and property committee, committee report due, due to um, the un 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 unavailability of member Foster Cannon to present, present it later on in our agenda. agenda. So, so we, we would like, like to invite member, member Foster, Foster Cannon, Cannon to present the Budget, the budget and Property Committee, Committee report. report. Mm -hmm. Is he still with us? Mm. I, know I know that she had, had a difficult time staying for much more of the meeting, so perhaps she is not able to be with us. We'll try again, see if she returns. So, so at this time, this time it's, we, we have, have our announcements, our school, school committee announcements. If anyone, anyone has an announcement, please, please raise, raise your hand. hand. Any, any announcements? I don't, I don't see, see any, any on Zoom. Zoom or no. um, I, don't I don't have one, but was, were you, you going to make an announcement about, about NEF? Something, something from Margaret? I think it's, it's in the, the agenda. Okay, great, great. So, so thank, thank you, you for reminding, reminding me. me. Yep. Yep. Or is, or is it, it not in the agenda? agenda. It's, it's not. not. Thank, thank you. Yes. yes. Well, I have, well, I have that. that. Yes. yes. Thank, thank you. you. So, so I will make the announcement, the announcement for member Miller, Miller who cannot be here. She is the NEF, NEF liaison. And NEF has, has announced that their small grants to educators, to educators program is accepting applications, applications for their spring cycle. cycle. Small, Small grants, grants fund, fund the development of new programs and approaches, and approaches that strengthen the student learning, learning both in the classroom, during, during the school day, as well as extracurricular initiatives. NEF invites grant applications from teachers and administrators in Northampton's seven public schools, all NPS and Smith Oak. 
They also, they also welcome, welcome applications, applications for projects initiated by caregivers, community members, students, and local, local organizations, as, as long as they are done in collaboration with an educator. Small, small grants are available in amounts up to $3,000 per year and grants submitted jointly and involving a collaboration across two or more public schools are eligible for up to $5,000 per year. Awarded, awarded grants may reapply for subsequent grants in the following years for up to three years total. Grant funding may be used to pay costs such as stipends for teachers, grant administration time, substitute teachers, consultants, travel and transportation, materials, subscriptions, and supplies directly related to the proposals. Applications to be considered for the spring application cycle may be received, must be received by 11 59 p.m. on Monday, April 15, 2024. Spring cycle applications are for projects that will begin no sooner than July 1, 2024 and must be completed by June 30, 2025. Those interested in applying should visit northamptoneducation.org to thoroughly review the small grants to educators program guidelines before applying online. Thank you, Thank you, Member, Member Miller, Miller, for submitting, submitting that to me to read during, during announcements. Any other, Any other announcements? announcements? No. Nope. So, so we, we will present that unless Member, Member Foster, Foster Canada back. is back. I don't, I don't see her, so we'll we will go forward, forward with the recommended, recommended actions. actions. This, this is a vote, vote for consent, consent agenda, meeting, meeting minutes for approval. For approval. January 11th, 2024, November 9th, 2025. Um, do, do, is this part of it, Member Seraphie Cox? Or are you just, just anticipating? Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Um, January 24th, 2023, March 20th, 2020. Yeah, is there a motion or a, a proposal to withdraw? Member Seraphie Cox. Um, I would like to withdraw January 2023 uh, for small changes, and I would make a motion to approve the rest of the consent agenda. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone, Anyone else? else? Oh, we, oh, need, we a need a second for that. A second. A second. Okay. 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 You have, have a second. second. Member Seraphie Cox made, made the motion. motion. Member Tennessee or member Monty made the second. So we will vote of a consent agenda for these minutes on January 11th, November 9th, and March 20th, and withdraw the January 20th, 24th, 2023. Yes. One other edit. One other. On January 11th, it's just a typo instead of anti Semitic. This is anti Semitics. And I just think we want to fight. I think we should. And we, and we just, just fix, fix that and, and not withdraw it. it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Do we, so we have a roll call, call please? please? Member, Member Foster Cannon. Member, Member Seraphie Cox. Cox. Yes. Member Stein? Yes. Member, Member Hennessy? Yes. yes. Sorry, did you say yes? Member, Member Labonte? Yes. yes. Member, Member Agner? Agner? Yes. yes. Member, Member Davis? Davis. Yes. yes. Member, Member Gazy? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving, We're moving on, on to. to... Oh, um, oh. Um, oh. Um, Yes. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve the January 24th, 2023 minutes um, with the following change, which okay. is okay. that there are um, principals uh, who are referred to in the in the minutes, and they are referred to as member Worley, member Harrison, uh -huh. that sort of thing, instead of their actual titles. Okay, so we, so we can, can correct, correct that. that. Do, we Do we need to bring that to the next meeting to have a yeah. final approval? Yes. 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 Okay. No, I, I, made a, I made a motion to approve it with that change. Thank you. Thank you. All, right. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Great. 
Member Member Sarah Sarah Cox move to approve 24, January 24th, 2023. Member Gazy seconded it. We have, we have another, another roll call, call please. please. <laughs> You're catching, You're catching up. up. Great. Great. Great, thank you. Sorry. No, no, it's not a problem. It's okay. <laughs> not at all. Uh, uh, Member Sarah Cox. Cox. I'm sorry, I have a, but yes. <laughs> Member, Member Stein? Stein? No. Member, Member Hennessy? Yes. yes. Member, Member Labonte? Yes. yes. Member Egg? Yes. yes. Member, Member Davis? Yes. Member, Member Gazy? Yes. yes. Member, Member Foster Cannon, Cannon are you back? back? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, now we move on, on to new business, new business action, action items. items. And, our and our first one is vote, vote to approve NHS program of studies, studies SY 2024 to 2025. And we have Principal Lurley. Again. Again. <laughs> And could Principal Worley like move the microphone even closer? It, it's still pretty hard to understand. How's, how's that? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello again. Hello again. Uh, uh, so, so I, I want to make sure you have, have uh, we, we, we updated, updated the copy of the program of studies in your folder, I think, this morning. This morning. So, you so you should have, have uh, uh, no. no? It wasn't there because it was already posted. So you just have to explain. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, well, unfortunately, then you don't have the copy with the new cover on it. Um, so it has a cover now, artwork by student. So we'll we'll get you that copy uh, tomorrow, and it'll it, it, it's actually posted on our website as a draft, so you can find it there. Um, so most uh, so the uh, program of stages here. There's there's Fairly minimal, minimal changes, changes, mostly language, language and clarification. clarification. For example, um, uh, uh, the what was the uh, the, the department formerly known as Fine and Performing, performing Arts is now Visual, visual and, performing and Performing Arts, arts. and that, and that uh, aligns better with how the the rest, the rest of the world is uh, talks, talks about art. Um, there's, there's one uh, there's one change on the list, the list which we took off the list. list. So the, so the very first, first one, which is a graduation requirement, in conversation, in conversation with, with the um, curriculum, curriculum subcommittee, we uh, they, they determined that actually, that actually that's a that's policy uh, change, uh, change, and, and that, that that language, language should go, go to, to the policy, policy subcommittee. It's, it's, it's not, not an urgent, urgent change, change. Um, um, and, so and so we'll, we'll uh, we took, took that out of the, of the program of studies, studies so that uh, even though you see it in the copy you're looking at, it's it's not, it's not what, what we're asking, asking you to prove tonight, tonight because that, 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 that will bring, bring that back at a later date. date. Um, so, so um, part, part of the, the, the logic of, of the limited, limited changes was understanding that the, the, the um, fiscal, fiscal um, situation, situation was, was, was going, going to be very tight, tight and, we and we did not want to propose anything like a, like a new course, course that might that add additional, additional cost and be and difficult to support at this time. So, so we, we again, again and, and we'll, we'll also, also come, come back, back with, with I, I think um, a, a timeline, timeline which, which for, particularly, particularly for new new courses and program, program studies, studies changes, changes that, that would have a budgetary, budgetary impact, impact and try and, try and do those, those start those actually, those actually in the spring, spring so that, that by before, before we get to uh, budget, budget planning in the fall we we have, have an idea of what what we needed what the impact on the budget would be so there's so there's really there there are no Budgetary, budgetary considerations, considerations or changes, or changes in, 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 terms in terms of the proposed uh, uh, program of studies. studies. So, so with, with that, that um, I'd, I'd be happy, happy to answer, answer any questions, questions you might have. have. Okay, are there, are there members, members who want to ask, ask questions? questions? I wonder if we should have a motion before so we could have a discussion. I think that's the, so let's have a motion to vote on this for approval. Does anyone make a motion? I'll make a motion to okay. approve Member Gacy makes a motion. A second York High School and program of studies. And Ailey. Member right. Davis seconds it. <laughs> now we can have a discussion. And Member Stein. 
Thank you. Um, I have three questions. Um, the first two are more related to budget pieces we've recently been talking about. Um, so on, I don't even know when we met Tuesday, uh, whenever we had the budget and property subcommittee meeting, we talked about the proposed current reductions at the high school. And what we were told at that meeting that was that there was going to be two reductions to specials. Um, and I'm wondering when I look at this um, program of study, what courses and what units are considered specials? And should we assume that if the proposal goes through that some of these will not take place? So I, I'm, I can almost hear. I think the question is, what will the impact of the reduced positions be on course offerings? Yes. Summarize it. Yeah. So, what what I would say is we we have um, while uh, the 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 budget the cost centered budget that I that I think you received shows specific positions that have been reduced. So those the way that the uh, budget director uh, um, has explained that to me is those are placeholders. We haven't actually made the spe specific identified specific positions and that's in part because we want to do it we're we're still in the process and and still looking at how many positions uh currently there's four positions uh that are reduced in the in the budget from the current staffing and one of the things we want to do is look at the data and that's partly course requests and then make decisions based on what we think we can responsibly do and so that there's there's sort of th the way I think of it. There's three possible impacts. One is uh, to increase class sizes. Another is to reduce course offerings, and the third is to reduce services to students. So there'll be and and given the number of positions, uh, I would anticipate that all three of those will be impacted. Great. Uh, my second question is uh, similar. Uh, it's along the lines of the guidance department. So what we were presented on the last meeting of the budget and property subcommittee was uh, losing one guidance counselor and one adjustment counselor. And given sort of what we've heard tonight, I'm wondering if you could talk about what the impact might be in terms of what the plan of study outlines is gonna be delivered um, relative to that, that department if we make those cuts. Again, as I as I understand it, the, the, the cost center budget those are placeholders and we haven't made final decisions on which positions would be reduced. And if, if it's four positions, I, I, I would uh, argue vociferously that we cannot uh, reduce two counseling positions. Okay, thank you, yeah. Um, last question has to uh, do with a, a perennial, an annual issue here, which is the, the question of embedded honors and math. And I know you had just come on last year when we had this, I think you were maybe a month into the job. Um, and um, there had been three previous years where sort of questions about this had gone unanswered. And last year we voted to send this question to the curriculum subcommittee and for some data to be collected so that we can understand this change. And to my knowledge, we haven't gotten any of that information and here we are again being asked to vote on the program. So I'm wondering where we've gotten to with uh, evaluating that change in curriculum um, and what the updates are. If I if I may interrupt, because that's not really your bailiwick, uh, Principal Bailey, I want while. Uh, <laughs> little, all right, sorry, I'm a little tired. So uh, so apparently the subcommittee, curriculum subcommittee, has not responded to that. So. It's not up to the principal to take on what was assigned to that subcommittee to respond. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm not sure that's accurate if there are members of that subcommittee. I know there was meetings held regarding this and so that it had been taken up and that we were they were waiting for information to come back. So I, I don't think it's the case, um, especially if we look at the record, that that's accurate. I mean, other members could correct me if I'm wrong. But... Didn't you just ask? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. You just asked a question, and then you're saying it's not accurate. 
So you must know something that we don't know already, but it is well, in the preview uh, of the subcommittee that mm -hmm. should really be responding to this work. And yes, so and I, what I'm saying is that, that they may take, the, I didn't finish. I so have the floor. I have the floor. Uh, it is my, I have the, the floor. Assignment. Okay. Thank you. What I'm saying is, I was in the middle the, of the state. There were meetings of that subcommittee on this issue. And what you suggested was that it was referred there and the subcommittee did nothing. So the truth is somewhere in it's there. The so, of my mouth. Okay. okay. So Member I'm Stein, sorry. let's let the superintendent answer now. No, I, I don't have to answer. Okay. He's already put words in my mouth and he's made the statement. And so it is the responsibility of that subcommittee to answer to the school committee because that was the charge that was given. And I think I was I was taught early this week that the 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 role of the school committee is to then refer things to subcommittees and the subcommittee is then charged to respond in that manner so the subcommittee that is 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 active should then respond to your question so we don't have an answer to that it wasn't on our agenda and we can put it on our agenda for our next meeting which will be in march Okay, can you be spe specific? Who's agenda? The school committee's agenda oh, or the, the curriculum? curriculum subcommittee. Thank you. Because I, I think that needs to be clarified. Okay, so the curriculum subcommittee will take up that agenda item in the next meeting. I, I mean, just, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you pointing out that my colleagues may have fallen down on this and not brought it back. But we can't keep having these meetings where things we vote on as a body don't happen. And the only time a member can ask about this is when something like this is being presented because I'm being asked to vote on it again. And this will be the fourth time that a committee has voted on this same issue and the same questions come up and haven't been answered. So I'm really hoping maybe fifth time's the charm and next year the curriculum committee will bring us uh, what's been asked for, for for three iterations of this committee. Now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, member Sarah Cox. Yes, um, and apologies, I missed what um, pr uh, Principal Worley said was the was the graduation requirement that is on the version we have that should be taken off of what we're voting on. What I just wanted to be clear about Yes, that. that's correct. So the, the very first item of the, on the list of changes that we want to do uh, uh, have enrollment be a part of a graduation requirement is not in the document that you'll be approving tonight. We we scratched that from the document. Okay, so the one that says a student must be enrolled at Northampton High School for their last two semesters prior to graduating. Yes, exactly. And that's going. To I I, I had a lot of questions about that one, so right. I'm glad well, that that's the one that is being removed. Um, and you said that um, it'll be the curriculum subcommittee that takes that up? No, that will be referred to the policy rules policy. policy. Yes, thank you. Yes, we will take up that one. Are there any more comments before we move to the vote? Yes. 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 I, I love this. Uh, very clear, um, very organized, and I think, you, and I love the artwork. You did a great job, all of you. In case somebody didn't see all the buttons. Any others? I actually, yes. I, I don't know if this is related, but I feel like it's incumbent upon one of us to say this. And it's just to remind the public that school committee is charged with three things. And one is the evaluation of the superintendent. The second is rules and policy. And the third is budget. And so sometimes it gets, it's difficult as we um, are discussing different issues, one of them being the program of studies where it came to the, um, the curriculum committee, but that's, it's a, it, it's a tricky committee because we really don't approve curriculum. We approve budget and policy. And so through no fault of anyone, we realized this was a, a rule and policy and that goes to a different subcommittee. So I just think sometimes um, the public, including me, when I wasn't on the school committee, I thought the role of the school committee was much larger than it actually is. Um, but just to remind the, the public of that, and that's why this happened. 
Anything yeah. else? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Member Stein? Yeah, I, I mean, I just want to say that I think there's a disagreement about whether or not curriculum is in the purview of school committees and that it, it clearly is. And that's why we voted to reestablish the curriculum committee during the last session. It's why the majority of other districts have them. And we do have to approve changes to the curriculum. That's one of our responsibilities. And I think this idea that we don't, I, I, I want to see where, where it says in the law we don't do this, if, if this is going to be the new vision of, of what our purview is. But the mission that we approved as a committee for uh, curriculum um, is very specific. And if we're going to walk away from that, we've got to have a bigger discussion about it. But I don't want the community to think that it's the case that we were just mistaken and the curriculum is not in school committee purviews. It, it most certainly is. And there's a disagreement about that. And we can debate the relative facts and statutes and make a determination. And over the past couple of committees, it's swung different directions, one to eliminate the curriculum committee that existed and one to restore it. And I'm not sure what, where we are, but it's a conversation that we, we should have as a body. Thanks. Thank you. Can I? Say one. Yes, Amber Davis. Um, this very well might not be the moment to say this, but I just want to reiterate um, our communication agreement that we agreed that we were going to actively and respectfully listen. So that means take turns. Like I teach in my classroom, we need to take turns so we can really listen. And when we don't, we can't always hear what each other is saying anyway. <clears throat> so I just wanted to put that out there. Because we all need to keep trying. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I think it's time for us to move to a vote on um, the NHS Program of Studies, SY 2024 to 25. Roll call, please. Member Stein? No. I'm sorry, what was that? A uh, no. Member Hennessy? Yes. yes. Member Labonte? Yes. Member Agna? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. Member Gazy? Yes. Member Serafi Cox? Yes. Let's check and see. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving to, I did get everyone. Vote to approve out-of-state field trip for Leeds third grade. We have that in our packet. Or anybody wants, is going to speak to it? Okay, thank yeah. you, Dr. Bonner. Okay, so um, Leeds Elementary School uh, third grade classes, classes are traveling out-of-state to the Pequot Museum in Mashantucket, Connecticut on Friday, March 29th. And the teachers who are running this particular field trip are Megan Pilas and Alyssa uh, Messoff. And so I'm hoping that tonight the school committee will approve this tour. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve the Leeds field trip for third grade. Member Gacy makes the motion. Do we have a second? A second. And Ms. Member Labonte seconds it. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, Member Hennessy. Yes. Member Labonte. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. Member Gazy. Yes. Member Serafi Cox. Yes, and it's a great museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Member Stein. Yes. All right, thank you. Next is vote to approve out-of-state field trip for eighth grade. And Dr. Bonner will speak to it. Okay, so the JFK eighth grade Wright Flight Club mm -hmm. would like to travel to the New England Air Museum uh, in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. The advisor of that club is Jessica Thierry and the trip will take place on April 10th. Do we have any questions? Oh. We have a motion. A motion. Member Labonte makes the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Member Gacy makes the second. Should have said then if there are any discussion, but at this point we have a roll call. 
Member Hennessy. Yes. Member Labonte. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. Member Gacy. Yes. Member Seraphie Cox. Yes. Member Stein. Yes. Thank you. Next, to vote on the district calendar for school year 2024 to 25. And lots of people are waiting for the answer on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Starting to make plans for yes. next year. So, um, do you want to do the motion? And I talk yes, about it let's make. Will you make a motion to vo vote to approve the district calendar? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to vote to, to approve. The district, district calendar. A second. And member Hennessy makes the second. And let's have any discussion about it. Okay. So you will, will notice that the calendar has a new look this year. And I want to thank Michelle Jarvis for the design. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely helps those who of us who are a little bit visually impaired. <laughs> um, you will see that it has all of the data for the information that we normally have in our little boxes and so on, and they're uh, categorized on the calendar. Um, and it has been reviewed by uh, both principals and states. Great. I'd just like to comment that this is a welcome change to the calendar as far as being able to read it. Thank you, Clerk Jarvis. I love college comments. All right, we had a motion, and so we'll have a, any discussion more than what Dr. Bonner shared with us. I have a question, Member Davis. Um, I'm not, not suggesting that they should be included in the holidays because there are many, many, mm -hmm. but over years and years, um, you know, before school committee, just as parents of, uh, of students. Religious holidays um, can be that that teachers are not aware of, and they mistakenly, innocently, mistakenly schedule an exam or something or field trip that day. And I'm wondering, um, again, I'm not suggesting that they should be on here since they're not days off, per se, but... Would it be helpful in some way, or or what? Would there be a system for that to them to be updated instead of a student after the fact saying I can't be there? It's Rosh Hashanah. It's Eid. It's something else. So, Member Davis, what we can do is that, um, and this is more so for the staff. Yeah, and, um, is to just kind of put out at the beginning of the school year a reminder of those special holidays to be cognizant of how you plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then also um, even to remind us how we plan our administrative meetings in terms of faculty meetings and so on. So um, if we could put that in the minutes to remind me to do that at the beginning of the school year, we would definitely do that. Okay, it did come up. I'll just make a comment then. When... We were taking different religious holidays off oh, one year, right? And it became very difficult, and we decided as a school committee to just go to federal holidays. Right. But at the time, interim um, Pearson Campbell did say that she would definitely do reminders to the staff of the religious holidays that some of their students might be celebrating. Member Sophie Cox. Yes, thank you. Um, I love the new look, like mm -hmm. amazing. I, I opened it and I just, yeah, immediately was like, oh, I can read this. Um, uh, yes, I made a note uh, to just a reminder about the holiday challenges. So thank you for uh, for bringing that up. Also, um, um, you know, we've been hearing from a lot of caregivers about challenges in terms of um, childcare uh, crunches and so forth that happen on half days and um, teacher work days and um, the week long of, of half days for the elementary um, uh, uh, caregiver teacher conferences. Um, so just kind of 
lifting that up again here. I'm not suggesting any changes uh, with the um, calendar at this time, but um, wanting to highlight that those challenges continue and um, and highlight that uh, at least the conferences are something that would need to um, you know be a, a mutual agreement with um, with our um, with our school employee um, association. Yeah. So um, just highlighting that here. And then the one, change that I would suggest is that um, you have a note that just says snow days will be added accordingly, but there is a, um, a, a, a maximum number of snow days that we can have. So there is a guaranteed, the, the school year will not extend beyond this date. And so if that can somehow be indicated mm -hmm. on the right. calendar that would be helpful i don't know if that would be confusing but we could make that statement because they should know uh the law 180 days uh, and make up time until june 30th so the official cutoff mm -hmm. so oh, i uh well uh, there is that but i it was my understanding that like you know there's a maximum number of snow days like that you can't have more than five snow days or whatever no, i forget no, how many it is no the maximum you, you can't go beyond june 30th and so there's a couple of time frames that you have to consider you have to consider at minimum 180 days one and then uh if there are um days off due to inclement weather because it's not just snow days yeah. and yeah of course um, you have until June thirtieth to make up those days, and you somehow have to make sure that it equals the one hundred and eighty. So yes. that's pretty much the, the regulation of the law. Okay, I think that maybe I misunderstood because past calendars had the like the snow days and would say like last yes. possible end of school. Um, I'll, I'll pull up one of the old calendars, but if that is not actually a thing, then no, you shouldn't put it on the calendar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Thank very you. good. Thanks. We'll look into it later, just to, just to make yeah. sure, but that's usually how it. Yep, we need the 180 days, and I know there's been discussion about when we had a lot of snow days that we were going to have to go to into April or February vacation in order to do that. So anyway, we'll Check it out. Thank you. Uh, Member Stein? I just wanted to confirm that any of the open houses or other, I think it's just the open houses here, don't conflict with school committee meetings. I want to know if uh, so open, open houses, houses conflict, conflict with any with holidays. No, no, uh, with school committee meetings. Oh, oh with no, we made sure we checked that this year. <laughs> So that was yeah. crazy. Yeah, we had a problem this year. So thank you for that question. But I'm glad that we get checked on it for this calendar. Any other questions before we vote? Thank you again, Member Jarvis. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Member Jarvis. Clerk Jarvis for the new design. <laughs> Like no member Agnes Tyre. Member, right. Okay, maybe we have a roll call, please. Member Labonte. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. Member Gazy. Yes. With the full mouth. Sorry. Member Seraphy Cox. Yes. <laughs> member Stein. Yes. Member Hennessy. Yes. Thank you. All right, now we have vote to approve special education budget transfers and we have Bobby Jones stepping up to the plate on this one. Welcome, Bobby. Oh, we're going to take all of them together. Okay, so one is legal services for $20,000. Second is therapy services, $20,000. Collaborative tuition, $46,650. Public in-state tuition at 58527 
and tutoring services at $65,000. Bobby Jones, please. Okay, so these transfers are basically just within um, de the department. Um, for instance, the collaborative tuition is just moving from um, non-public tuition. So it was just where we placed students at the time um, when we were budgeting last year, but they actually went to a different school. So that's just a matter of moving within um, the same section, just different the way I report it at the end of the year report. Um, same for the non-public tuition and the public in-state, that's just moving to the correct lines. Um, and tutors, the same, is just kind of moving them around. The one thing that we are really reducing is the translation services. Um, you'll see that on the um, bed legal service transfer and then also on the tutoring service. Uh, have a reduction in the translation services. And that is an area we will be reducing in the second round on the budget uh, because we've had some real good um, results with Parent Square. And then Michelle, has, our superstar tonight, has um, come up with some other ways in which we can do it. And then Lauren Barry, our EL person, um, is working with a company um, that could provide the service to us for a much lesser price while meeting all our um, legal requirements. Thank you, Bobby. Um, first, to have a discussion, let's have a motion to approve this budget, the budget transfers. We have a motion. I move to approve the budget, budget transfers. Do we have a second on that? I second it. Okay, Member Hennessy made the motion. Member Hazy seconded it. Um, do we have any discussion about this? Member Stein. Um, hi, Bobby. I I saw this on here, and I kind of wish we had been able to talk about it at Budget and Property the other day. Um, but I'm curious if the transfers or the amount we budgeted, but all attribute, like I understand you're saying the, the tuition seems to be that, but is there an increase overall in the amount of money we're talking about for these expenditures based on what we budgeted? Yeah, so the lines that we're transferring into, if you look at your, um, the sheets we're taking from and the lines that we're putting to are actually increasing that line from what we had originally budgeted. Right, I guess I'm wondering because we're moving between accounts, if the net is more. No. Okay. No. No. Okay. All right, that, that's what I couldn't uh, figure out. It seemed like it was the same, but no. um, great. And um, on the tutoring services, was that moved just because we used a different provider? Okay. Basically, yes. Whether we used an in-house or a contracted versus, um, you know, regular ed versus special ed, that sort of thing. So yeah, it's just a change in in the department. And on the legal services one, it, do we have multiple legal services for special education accounts that we move them between or? Just one. We have one. Um, we have two legal lines in our budget. One is for regular ed and one is for special ed. So we just- so are, we, are we moving one? Are we moving the 20 from the regular ed to the special ed? No, we're removing the 20. We're using the translation service line and moving it into the SPED legal service line. So we're increasing the SPED legal service line. Okay. And I see that um, Josh has his hand Director up. Director so Dixon, do you want to jump in here, Director Dixon? Um, I just wanted to clarify uh, to answer Member Stein's question regarding uh, the tutoring services. We've seen an increased number of students who have been hospitalized over the course of this year, uh, which has required us to increase our contracted tutoring services line because we're required to provide tutoring services to students 
um, when they are either homebound on a home hospital form uh, or if they are actually hospitalized inpatient. And so we've seen a drastic uh, increase in the amount of students who have required that level of service over the course of this year. Thank you, Director Dixon. And so, Bobby, is it right to say that the offset of what you're able to save in translation paid for the additional amount of legal? So it, it balanced out? Is it does balance out. Okay, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Member Sarah Cox. Oh, yes. Uh, I had raised my hand to ask a question about the um, the translation. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't like people aren't requesting it, but uh, you answered uh, the question and it sounds like great news, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments before we vote? All right. May we have a roll call, please? Member Agna? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. <clears throat> Member Gazy? Yes. Member Seraphie Cox? Yes. Member Stein? Yes. Member Hennessy? Yes. Member Labonte? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to reports and recommendations. And we begin with our superintendent's report yeah. and Dr. Bonner. See if I can share. See if it'll work for me now. <laughs> now my Zoom's not working. So there we go. I know. This some days it works, and some days it doesn't. So it's working now. So um. I will try to keep this uh, relatively brief because there's quite a, a few points that I need to make. So first off, this evening, each February, National Black History Month serves as a as both celebration and a powerful reminder of the immeasurable contributions of Black Americans to the fabric of this nation. Recognizing the legacies and achievements of generations past, reckon with centuries of injustice and addressing those injustices that still linger. We recognize our staff, students, and families that identify themselves as Black, African American, Brown, BIPOC, and people of color. So currently in our district, we have 15 staff members across all units and non-union members that make up the diversity of our staff. 3.2% of our students identify as African American and 7.4% are multi-race. So I wanted to share that this evening in celebration of Black History Month. And so now tonight, the, the main point of my um, report is to talk a little bit about where I am with the three goals that we set at the beginning of the school year, as well as to give you some highlights of where I am in terms of my entry plans. They're, they're intertwined. And so Michelle will be sending you the actual Google, uh, uh, well, it's not really a presentation, it's really just a document. And so you will see in the document that there are um, sources of evidence that um, will show you that I'm making progress towards the goals. So the first goal is effective entry and direction setting. And so if you remember back in September or so, I did a presentation in terms of the entry plan. And so I have actually been implementing that entry plan in such a matter as back gathering from key stakeholders and reviewing documents that provide insight into the operational structure of the system. The final expected outcome of this plan will contribute to the development of a new multi-year strategic plan. And so there were several benchmarks for assessing this goal. And so for one, I've already completed the presentation. Secondly, is the implementation of the plan itself. We are actually in the third quarter, I can't believe that. And so if you uh, hit the link, you can actually uh, see the entry plan. And then updates in terms of the entry plan itself. So very quickly, oh. 
Let's see if I can do this. Nope, very quickly. <laughs> I got a lot going on here. Let me see if I can get back. If, again, if you uh, tap on the updates, you will see that there is a chart that really kind of highlights in terms of some of the meetings that I've held, uh, sample agendas. Uh, you will see um, some of, uh, and when I say sample agendas, sample agendas for the alt meetings, you'll see sample agendas for the principal meetings, central office meetings, as well as the, my superintendent's cabinet meetings. Um, you will also see examples of the goal or the dates in which I met with each principal in terms of their setting up their goal for their evaluation. <laughs> All right, so, and then currently conducting a survey of stakeholders to assist with identifying goals and priorities of the school district. Results from this survey will contribute to the multi-year strategic planning process. Both leadership and planning teams have been initiated in the following, uh, and the following the plan for success protocol, which comes from besties. All right, administrators of uh, professional learning uh, around restorative practice and SEL. Currently, we are reading the Little Book series of restorative justice and education by Katherine Evans and Dorothy Vandering as a professional learning community. This spring, the, through the partnership with Soul Folk University, we will train 20 staff members, <clears throat> excuse me, two or more for building to then be trainers in their assigned buildings to bring a district-wide model to restorative practices. The past year and a half, principals have been discussing what restorative practices means to us in our respective schools and clarifying our approach of implementation. It is important to have the common understanding of why restorative practices are being implemented. For the district, restorative practices mean two things. Creating just and equitable learning environments, nurturing healthy relationships, and repairing harm and transforming conflict. This was lifted directly from our reading. So that's the reference to that in terms of page five. The sixth benchmark, we have uh, several SEL programs, K through eight, that strengthen relationships between individuals as well as develop social connections within communities and schools. Restorative practices help to create a trusting environment by giving both students <laughs> both students um, and adults an opportunity to make positive choices and interact uh, respectfully in the classroom and through the school. Uh, next steps is to build foundational structures to support restorative practices. Um, just to share with you, um, in the month of December, I believe it was, uh, and prior, the curriculum subcommittee actually had um, staff presentations, the principal as well as the staff members shared in terms of some of the SEL programs that are in uh, our elementary schools. Okay, the seventh benchmark, updating select policies and code of conduct to include anti-bias and anti-race language and practice. The first half of the school year, working with the ALT team, council, and policy and rules subcommittee, we updated the implementation plan to prevent bullying and the policy that addresses bullying behavior. The administration continues to converse about our processes, protocols, and procedures. I will um, just kind of reference that this goal was probably the most deeply of all of the goals, so the other ones are not as goal. So we're almost through this. So the other piece, eight, equitable budget that addresses needs of learners that provides opportunities, accessibility, and inclusion. The budget process in December, I presented the first view of the 2024 2025 school budget. This budget was developed with the assistance of building principals and department heads who each presented their needs to the district manager and the superintendent during the move of October. And there were four guiding principles to help our decision making and still continues to be. I won't read those because those, again, are lift directly from the, the, the latest newsletter that I was sharing in terms of the budget process. So that should be familiar to you. 
Okay. If we go to see the last benchmark under this goal was to introduce smarty goals in terms of um, when we build our school improvement plans. And smarty goal is just a take on smart goals and it just includes the uh, component of inclusion and equity. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how we went about and we're still working on this. Um, so the principal, you know, it took it to task, took it to their school council members and began to draft the wording appropriately. And so in the, I don't know what I keep going. So in uh, the document, you can get a sample of the draft of the school improvement plan using that process. Okay, goal two, new superintendent induction program. So again, you can see the benchmarks for this particular one. There were um, two. And so, first of all, a calendar uh, documents. So, sorry. So some of the evidence that I would collect for this were the actual um, attendance to the, the sessions. And so this is a listing of the sessions that uh, I have attended thus far. Um, we have uh, a full session in March, and then the other two will be half-day sessions until the end of June. And so that will be my first year of the NISA program. And then the, there is a year two, which is less intensive, but it has been, um, it's been interesting. It's been a good networking experience and connecting to other superintendents. Um, so we have, we have discussed, we have discussed the wide range of uh, leadership topics on leadership. Um, and just again navigating, and this this program was really solely for new superintendents, but it's it's um, for me it's nice to be a part of the conversations because I haven't been in Massachusetts in a while, um, and it's also just an opportunity for me to network with other uh, school superintendents. So part of the process of uh, the NISA program is that we look at our leadership style. And so one of the tools that they use for, for the participants to examine their leadership style is the Bowman and Deal four frame model. And so um, this was a conversation in the evaluation subcommittee group um, two meetings prior in, uh, in terms of what this was all about. And I said, well, you know, I. I would love to share this with you. And then I would love to redo the, the scoring and see if it changes after I have been in, with you all for a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's truly experiences begin to shape your leadership style. Um, and so, but currently right now, uh, my, my, my preference is uh, the human resource approach, emphasizing the importance of people. And then the second and third, uh, the second being uh, an emphasis on the rationality and analysis, logic, facts, and data, uh, which really goes with my science background. And then the third score, I had a tie between the political acumen and the symbolic approach. And you can see what those, those people and um, how I identify with those. The last goal, and then we just kind of briefly go through those indicators, is to maintain momentum during the transition. And so keep the district moving forward during this year's transition to leadership by working with principals and other district leaders to ensure that meaningful progress is made on critical districts and school goals. So as you all know that not only me being new to the district, we had many new uh, principals. And so, you know, working with them, setting their evaluation goals, and then also um, assigning them coaches to help them um, and to really talk about some of the things that they have been dealing with um, throughout the school year. And, and so, uh, as you say, our hot topics that we have conversations about. And then really kind of building a connection 
uh, you know, the elementary principles were pretty much isolated. So now you're starting to see more conversation amongst the four of them. And I have nicknamed them uh, the, the elementary powerhouse. <laughs> and I know I say that often. So um, I have also, as you, you all know that I do, I do school visits uh, and I've now been doing some formal walkthroughs going into classrooms. I've been focusing on um, the math, particularly the math program, because that is in its, I would say it's second year full piloting because there was a year where people had a decision whether they were to take it, but this is our official year that everyone should be um, really implementing that particular curriculum. And then also the conversations that ensue after in terms of what the principal in terms of what we saw, having conversations and how can we work to support that staff. And then, um, and so you can, again, there's a, a link where you can go in and see the school visits that I've done and those that are upcoming. And um, some of the other things that you will see during the final, uh, my final evaluation. So the goal is that I will update this and put links in. And so there will be, the links will be the evidence that supports that evaluation. So when you all are doing the scoring, you'll have that evidence right in front of you. And so lastly, very quickly, in terms of the, the indicator, so there are four indicators that I chose, the first being standard of instructional leadership. And so again, you'll see some links and it shows you some examples of some of our, our agendas uh, and some of the goals that we have set. Um, and then, oh, I wanted to see if I can do this. There's also, in terms of this new um, platform that we're using, Open Architect, and how it is our depository for data. So you can actually get us, if you touch or go into the sample, you can get a screenshot of our data and our protocol. So I won't do that tonight. You all can do that as well. Uh, analysis of school classroom observations. So again, we had converse, we being um, the principals had conversations and uh, our director of curriculum instruction led those conversations in terms of our casting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. And then very quickly, okay, again, budget. So I inserted the, the actual budget presentation and the timeline. And then, okay, so that got a little crazy here. So, so uh, yeah. outreach to yeah. stakeholders and organizations. So here's an ex uh, some of the samples of some of the organizations and groups that I have met with uh, that are, are um, with uh, community stakeholders. And so and partnering with them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been a, a pleasure working with many, many of these people. Okay, and then uh, communication indicator. So you will see that I have inserted samples of the newsletter, um, some of the weekly updates that not only do you all get weekly, and they're not necessarily weekly, but you get, so you won't get one tomorrow. <laughs> so, so there are updates that you receive. So, so do the alt team and principals. And in, in our meetings, we actually have a running uh, minutes. So we're just all sharing different things and, and comments and data pieces and so on. Um, and that is for our pur purviews to, to be able to um, do what we need to do as, as a team. Um, and then also there are some samples of some of the different postings in Parent Square. Uh, there is a sample of uh, teacher postings. There's a sample of a principal's posting, the district-wide posting. So that is all for you all to, at your own leisure, to take a look at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, uh, the bullying prevention plan. So this goes into our professional culture, cultural literacy indicator. So it's a little bit about the relevant policies and so on. So we know the bullying prevention plan was a big thing at the very beginning of the school year. I mean, that's attached there. Um, and then under the professional of uh, the continuous learning indicator, I shared about our PLC group where we are focusing on restorative practices. So there are some sample questions of what we've been focusing on in our book discussion 
that and the principal for right, so get to the end of that. Okay, so um, that's a little bit about the where I am in terms of my evaluation goals uh, and entry plan. And then the last piece of my report was uh, student attendance data that I wanted to put this year with you all. We talked about um, when we did the we talked a little bit about um, student attendance and try to capture if we saw any changes in the students' attendance due to uh, the uh, start time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think I've captured the years and I tried to get a couple of years before the pandemic um, because we've got that in the interplay as well um, with the changes. So you can kind of get a look at where we are. So this is elementary and you can see uh, the, the spike. So we know where COVID would have been. It's really 2020 was COVID. And so you would see that in this year, you can see the absences, but then 21, 22, you know, there was a return, but you see the spikes and then 22, 23, which was just, you know, uh, last year, you see that spike. And then this is just uh, from August until December. So, um, and you can see some of the concerns in terms of the tardiness. So that's occurring. This is the elementary school. So now they're starting a little earlier. So you want to watch that. And um, well, the specials are, you know, they're kind of up and down. But I want to show you the middle and high school very quickly. Oops. Get that and there's actually. Um, you can see uh, 22, 23, and the 21, 22 year again. You know, these were the years where we were just returning from COVID 21, 22. And then you still see that spike, and you see where we are now um, for the first four months or so. Mm -hmm. school. But take a look at the dismissals, the early dismissals, mm -hmm. and then take a look at the tardy. So this is just day of care. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see down. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the high school. So again, you you. You kind of wondered about the, the early dismissals, but they seem, you know, you could take a look at the numbers. So uh, the tardies uh, are interesting, especially if they're starting late. So mm -hmm. I don't know quite what that is. That's a concern. So I wanted to show yes. This is beginning of the day tardy. It's not tardy to each class. Ha ha. So that. Is a good question. I would have to ask our data specialist to put this together, and because that, that high school is so unique, and it's also, um, so you have to ask the same thing about the absences too. How this is right. reported, and so I will um, research that, mm -hmm. and maybe invite them to update tomorrow okay. or next, also for next. <laughs> okay, so I will definitely ask um, our our coordinator, our data uh, analyst, is Rebecca Hasten. So I'll ask her. Oh, that's reported, and then I'll probably talk to the expert as well. Great. And so I am thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, please. I think it's for a Member Davis. Um, great. Um, you mentioned, Dr. Bonner, something about the elementary school teachers were or were feeling, I can't remember what your words were, isolated. And the principals. The principal. Oh, the principal. Yes, yes. Well, and I was wondering what you meant by that. Yeah. Just not having a lot of time to work together, basically. The collaboration so during night. That yeah. time to work together, that time to really talk to each other. Uh -huh. And they are actually sharing a coach right now. 
and um, Roxanne Dory, she meets with them uh, once a month uh, as a team. As a team. So it, it really has, I, I think it has enhanced their relationship. Yeah. And, uh, and then knowing about each other's schools. I mean, they are all very unique. Yeah. Uh, and so, but they all have strengths that they need to share. Yeah. So I'm seeing that. That's a great idea to have them, give them time to work together. That's like a, must be like a luxury. I'd say like, so thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments for Dr. Bonner? Thank you, Dr. Bonner. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the business administrator financial report and Bobby Jones. You're up, Bobby. Okay, so um, all my documents are in your packet. Um, the warrants that have been pre-signed and the monthly report, as well as the um, expenditure report. I will um, give a detail in April on the expenditure report. That'll be for your third quarter of fiscal 24. Um, other than that, we have the board docs update, which I will say Michelle has been working really hard on, um, and I will let her do her piece to update you. Do you want to share the So Michelle is going to be sharing with you. Uh, we actually did this agenda in board docs mm -hmm. um, as a test run. But there are, there are some things that we are going to have to train the committee on, and we're trying to figure out when we'll do that. Um, I know that we might have to have an, well, we will have to have an emergency meeting to um, approve the final minutes uh, to meet that deadline. So that might be a good time where we can also do the training in terms of how to access first and then how to navigate the board docs. So. So she's going to show you a sample. So this is um, what you look at when you log in. You get to this welcome screen. And so here are the agendas that I created for today's meeting, which appear there when you tell them to. <laughs> I have to find that spot. I'm like, why aren't they there? So I found it. Um, so if you click on the, the date of the meeting from that main screen, you can then view the agenda or print the agenda. Um, I'm going to show you the print version um, rather than viewing it. Um, so when I view it, I see all the spots that I filled things in. So you have three different types of agendas you can see. You have the simple agenda, which tells you just the topics and probably the subtopics under each one. Then you can go into the detailed agenda. And that's where it then shows you what type of category it is. Um, so this one's just the roll call. This one's just um, discussing the norms. If you get down to a vote one, it gives you a recommended vote. Um, and then the attachments are there for those votes. Um, so I'm just gonna keep scrolling down because there's a lot of votes there. That's what it would look like. I am not sure what it looks like on your end, but from my understanding through the training is you're allowed, you can vote from the screen if you're logged in. And that's one thing that I think that's what we need to figure out because I see something different than what you can see. Um, but it was something I played with and figured it out and then I thought I lost everything and I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. It's just where is it? So um but it's interesting. It just takes time and to figure out how to put this up in. Do you have any questions? Thank you for taking the initiative even that you're an interim or a, a not a permanent um, member Seraphie Cox. Just to say that I'm super excited about this and a thousand kudos for so swiftly implementing something that was not swiftly implemented before. 
agree. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Okay, thank you. So the Budget and Property Subcommittee had a budget update that member Foster Cannon was going to present and she is just asked if there's anything that she could send us, but I don't think I've got anything. Um, and I'm sorry that we can't have that report at this point, um, given that she's not here. Um, member Stein? Yeah, um, you know, Carrie, uh, Member Labonte and I are here, and we can offer a, a minority report um, as well. Um, so I'd be happy to convey, given the, the timelines we're on, what we discussed and what our next steps are so that the committee can understand the work we're doing. Is that all right with you, Member Labonte? Yeah, okay. So um, in this, this past meeting, we um, got an, a presentation overview of the enrollment numbers for the district, um, looking at the February enrollment numbers, as well as um, the sort of the historical shifts over time. How many, how many have we lost over a certain number of years? And um, mm -hmm. there's like a slight discrepancy in the figure that we saw on the original first look budget. Um, so on that budget, we saw a decline of I think 2.9% over like six fiscal years. We're just gonna confirm if it's like a, a keyed in error or something else, but that could that could grow or not. Um, but we, we've lost some students um, and the conversation we really had was about um, what some of the, the first look budget um, decisions would do related to those enrollments. So where would class size is increase? Where do we see other stresses um, on services based on where reductions in staff are being recommended as part of that process? So we walked through that, and those were the positions I was referring to earlier when I asked um, Principal Worley about the uh, the counselor positions and the specialist teachers. Um, so the conversation was centered around the enrollments um, and the fact that we do have declining enrollments. Um, we did discuss also school choice. Uh, and saw a distribution of where our school choice incoming students are across the district. And mm -hmm. um, in that conversation, it was clear that if we had if we made the decision as a district to no longer participate, we really would not save any money. So we'd probably be out, we would lose money um, because there's not a cluster of students that are school choice in any area where if they weren't here, you would be able to reduce a service that would actually save you any money. So financially, um, it's not a a win win to 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 eliminate as you know for us to opt out of that as a school committee, and we would still have all the students that we currently have enrolled throughout the duration anyway. So um, those are the big things. Next meeting, we're going to talk about uh, special education. Um, I believe uh, Director Dixon is going to join us and and review that. And at some point, I don't know if that meeting at or a future meeting, um, uh, member uh, Cannon Foster mentioned that Director Nardi was going to join us. Um, so there's some plans for the next couple couple meetings that she she mentioned. Um, and I'm hoping Member Labonte can add any context or things I forgot to mention. Anything, Lab Member Labonte, that you'd like to add? Uh, no, uh, just that we understand we're under a tight timeline and mm -hmm. that we want to make sure that these topics all get addressed before we have to make a recommendation. We discuss that. Thank you. Thank you, Member Stein. Um, and appreciate that we had that update. Curriculum Subcommittee. Um, the chair is myself. I've been elected chair at our meeting this past week. And um, we had an organizational meeting, uh, which uh, was in attendance and member Hennessy and Superintendent Bonner. Um, and we heard, after we did our organization, we heard from Principal Worley and Assistant Principal Megan Harrison about their work on the um, 
program of studies and which they reported on again today. And it was very similar to that. It was exactly what um, Principal Worley did present to us tonight. And that was the, that was our curriculum subcommittee. That's my report for it. And now we go to the LPAC liaison who is member Sarah B. Cox. Can you have a report? Yes, thank you. Uh, let me pull out my notes so that I don't forget things. Um, so I attended um, my first um, full um, uh, EL PAC uh, meeting. The EL PAC um, uh, stands for English Learner Parent Advisory Committee. Um, they have about three to four meetings per year. They provide resources for parents. They also um, bring in feedback from parents. Um, some of the uh, challenges that uh, that have been like the feedback that then I received um, as you know as the liaison there um, was about uh, lack of after school program support. Um, um, a bit about uh, lack of communication in Spanish um, uh, and that uh, at times folks don't know what resources are available. Um, with the uh, with the after school programs, a uh, concern about both the costs and that uh, at least uh, the after school program that they were talking about with, um, which are is not the why um, uh, ends at 4 p.m. Um, there were concerns about start time, um, concerns about start time in terms of, um, of childcare issues. And so really that was, um, uh, very tied to the after school concerns. Um, and, um, and, uh, folks also, um, uh, looking for more information and support um, about how to apply for college and especially how to apply for financial aid. Um, they, let's see, yes. So the, the um, I was presented to a room full of, <laughs> of folks um, who were so gracious um, and, um, and, um, there was uh, simultaneous uh, English to Spanish translation and vice versa. Um, the vast majority of the uh, caregivers who were in attendance um, are Spanish speaking, um, mostly monolingual, but not entirely. Um, there, uh, so the vast majority, but not all of the, of the caregivers in attendance were Spanish speaking. And, um, um, and it, it really just felt like a community building place. And that um, was really meaningful for me personally. Um, as many of you know, my, my personal stake in all of this, but also in terms of um, us as a district, that this is a new thing. We did not have an English learner parent uh, advisory committee um, you know, when I started on, uh, on school committee. So, um, or it was like just, just starting up. So this is, it's been an incredible development, uh, from the, uh, from the beginnings to where it is now. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for what this group, uh, is going to be bringing to the, uh, to the school committee. And um, uh, and that there were significant um, concerns voiced about uh, about the the budget as well. So um, folks were were pretty folks had a lot of um, a lot of questions about how um, IEPs um, would be affected as well as. Um, uh, let's see, uh, and class sizes, which is related to this uh, for special education students that 
uh, folks were really um, emphasizing uh, that that class size, small class sizes are especially important for special education students. Um, and uh, and worried about the um, both Spanish and English learner uh, community resources that are available. Um, and then um, the last thing that I'll say is that uh, folks uh, were, were also interested in what sort of instruction uh, can be expanded for uh, students in uh, in Spanish language itself. So not just English learner, but learning their, for most of these students, their native language of Spanish. Um, I shared my personal experience of my own daughter's uh, experience uh, in a dual immersion program um, that uh, was her kindergarten. Uh, she had two years of kindergarten in San Diego, California. And so I talked about kind of what dual immersion was. Um, and that, that seemed to resonate with the, with the group. Um, I don't, you know, um, that's their, what they do with that, I don't know. But uh, that was a really interesting discussion in terms of not just caregivers wanting, obviously, educational access for their students and wanting to make sure that they learn English, but also wanting to make sure that they can be not just bilingual, but biliterate uh, and to be literate in their native language as well. So, um, so a really rich conversation and a really, really amazing community that's being built. So um, I'm so grateful to be the liaison and uh, to be able to share with you my impressions of the amazing work that um, that the ELPAC, um, I don't know what they're called, like parent ambassadors, or I don't know exactly what their, uh, what their title is, but them and Lauren Berry, our family engagement coordinator, have been doing excellent, excellent work. Thank you, member Sarah Cox. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Really appreciate your, that was a really thorough report and it's great that you're there for them. Um, now we go to rules and policy subcommittee and member Casey. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, our first thing is the JHD, which is the exclusion. Um, um, what we want to share it. Down at the bottom. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. share the screen. Yeah. Okay, can, do you have the on there? Scott, there, there, it there it is. Okay, so we looked at um, the top, and the black is our original policy. This is for our first reading. We then got the um, MASC version. Um, and did a few changes. Um, Dr. Bonner forwarded uh, that to um, to attorney to Tim. Is that for that's not the attorney Taylor one. That's the one for Jennifer Tell. Tal oh, um, our oh, our um, registrar. Registrar yeah. to see if she had anything to do. Um, it was interesting. She commented that uh, that instead of just she suggested this section here. Each child must attend school beginning of September, the calendar year. Um, or until, or she had taken, oh, wait. 
well, the mass laws, she suggested <laughs> citing the mass law first, which says you have to be six, mm -hmm. but each school committee is, um, is able to set their own things and then follow that with a tag along that the minimum age being age five, um, which is our kindergarten effect. And there are various other places in the policies we're also looking at uh, about school attendance where we will be putting that type of language. Um, other than that, this one's sort of short. It's the first one of all of our sort of attendance policies that we're looking at in a packet to bring and make sure that we have similar language throughout. So, so that's the first reading? That's the first reading. Mm -hmm. um, um, Member Seraphie Cox? Yeah. Um, perhaps you all have already had a conversation about this, in which case you can just say, yeah, we're talking about that. Um, and that's enough for me. Um, but as I look at it, uh, it says that, uh, let's see, sorry. Um, failure. Okay. So that's the part that is the fifth. Okay. So our previous policy has like, that uh, being expelled and um, and also the um, fa failure to comply with JECB. And so I'm just curious, are the like, is this change going to impact that or are those things somewhere else that I'm just not seeing? JECB is the um, all these. The attendance of foreign yeah. exchange students in the Northampton public that, schools. That one we are still working on. Um, yeah. And it has changes that have been uh, worked on. We had to do JFABB. We had to do uh, the kindergarten. There's just this raft of J policies <laughs> that are right. interconnected. And that we have to make sure that they're all synchronized. Yeah, so. and and I guess what I'm saying is our old policy <clears throat> has reference to JECB, so it is synchronized in that right. way. And but this one doesn't did not. Yeah, and sometimes there are policies in the J that there is no MASC. Um, uh equivalent. And uh -huh. I believe that JECB is one of those okay. um, that we are looking at. Mm -hmm. So that's attendance for students. Uh, Foreign exchange students. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's also actually the more meaningful one is the JFABB, which is the uh, acceptance of international and foreign exchange students. So uh -huh. those, that's why, you know, we wanted to make sure that we have all our cross references in line so that we can, and I will look at all those cross references before our next meeting and make sure that they have been for you. Great. Thank you. Okay, any other conversation or discussion about the first one that's the first reading? Just that I'm going to add more. Right. 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 Now we move to the second one, policy ACAB and policy ACABA. Those were forwarded by the superintendent who just wanted to update them by putting in the current Right, Title IX coordinator. Yes. So it's just a name change Great. in that piece. So that's a quick. Great. Does that need to have any action on our part or is that just. Well, yeah. 
it does. So next we time we'll bring it. But meanwhile, it it's, but meanwhile, yes. it's, it's on our website as a draft. Okay. That one has to come. So we'll bring it to the next meeting as a vote. As a vote. Yeah. Okay. Who has your hand up? Gary. Oh. oh, sorry. Gary. Sorry. <laughs> I'm short. You can't see me. <laughs> oh, no. Um, one question. So that, that writing uh, in the black is... Is that the, is that like pulled out of state? That was pulled out of a um, email that we got that showed um, suggestion. the suggestions where, for instance, she suggested instead of having this failure to meet the requirements of age, right. uh, we should cite the letter of the law so that each children must attend school beginning in September the calendar year, which she attends the age of six. Each school committee may establish its own permissible age for school attendance, provided that such age is not older than the mandatory minimum. And then the next sentence, our minimum age is five. My my question is, I wondered if it isn't state law to be written on, if we could put Keishin Bay. Yes. Thank you. Or there. Thank you for that reminder. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the other policies that will be affected are JEBA. Just mm -hmm. notice them right there. Yeah. The um, first grade entrance policy, the residency policy school admissions, school choice, the immunization, and then again, all those other ones for the high school for foreign language students. That they will be looking at. We don't need a vote for <clears throat> first reading? No. First reading, yeah. Oh. Jeez. Okay. Is that it, Member Gacy? Yes. Thank you very much. All right, moving on, Superintendent Evaluation Subcommittee. It's Member Hennessy and myself and Member Miller, who's not here. Um, I think we had a very thorough report today, tonight, from the Superintendent about where and what we also received as part of our subcommittee, our meeting, and appreciate the detail that you've gone into about it. Is there anything you'd like to add, Member Hennessy? No, I think your report was thorough and kind of yes. soft. Okay. Right. Really appreciate the detail and keeping track as well. Thank you. Okay. We are on to school committee discussion topics, which at this point we don't have any under listed at this point. Um, future business and meeting dates. The curriculum subcommittee will meet Wednesday, March 6th, 2024 at 5 p.m. The budget and property subcommittee will meet Monday, March 11th, 2024 at 5 p.m. The school committee meeting next one will be Thursday, March 14th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. And the rules and policy subcommittee will be Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. Chair, uh, just to change order that curriculum and subcommittee, the yes. time change is 3.30. Oh, that's right. We really, we did that. And we made that change on last evening, but yes. um, we didn't get it communicated to our clerk. So at 3.30, we are meeting. Thank you for reminding me. On Wednesday, March 6th. And everyone should know that all these meetings are posted and people are welcome to attend. We're very happy to have audience members and we will have public comment at those meetings if anybody would like to join and share with us anything that you'd like, like to us to know in our subcommittee meetings also. All right, we're going into executive session. However, we will return to open session because we will be doing some business in executive session and we'll return to vote on the MOAs that we're discussing. So I 
wonder if anyone could make the motion to request to enter executive session. Exactly. Well, uh, members I have are... it ready. Yeah. Uh, motion to enter executive session yes. under Massachusetts general law open meeting chapter 30A section 21A2 to approve and release executive session minutes and to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Um, Thank you. Uh, no, no, it's no good. Um, this executive session motion does not have the required language about um, bargaining with union with you know collective bargaining, which is what is required for I believe both of the MOAs listed in the agenda. To conduct collective bargaining more to conduct collective bargaining section. Right, but it says non-union personnel. Yeah, but to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract yeah. negotiations with non-union personnel the 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 one that is the um the, you, the one the one that we at least that i am used to for when we have um moas reads differently than this I, i'm we can go in I, I mean, i'll still make this motion we'll go into executive session and obviously we can do the um the minutes and I'll I'll look up uh a, one of the past motions to to oh. see how how the language is different because the other thing is if yeah. it Union if it's calling the correct uh section of open meeting law right so, so while while you're looking at that I believe that yeah. it, it's the it's the one word at the last sentence of the motion when we say non-union, it actually just agrees with union personnel. Because it starts, the, the key starts for to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations. It should say with union personnel. But you can double check the language there on that. Double check the language with past motions. Is that what you mean? Actually, no. Actually, we'll just go straight to the open meeting. That's what that's called. Oh, I see. Yeah, there was three different there's three, three different, different ones that we yeah. used. So that was, was cool. yeah. but I'm thinking that it's just a um typo. The typo where yeah. it should be union, not non. Should, it should read negotiations with union personnel. Okay. Can we go into it and having you check it again, member Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll check it while we're doing the minutes. Okay, so we have a request and a motion. Is there a second? I second it. All right. Let's have a roll call, please. Mayor Davis. Yes. <clears throat> Member Daisy. Yes. Member Sarah Peacock. Yes. Member Stein. Yes. Member Hennessy. Yes. Member Labonte. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Mm, yes. Okay. So again, a reminder that we are going into executive session now. We will return to open session for a final couple of votes and our adjournment where we will also do our ratings for our norms. Um, if you wish to stay on, um, could the clerk put people into a waiting room? If they're planning to stay, um, I, I can help. <laughs> I'm going to help. I'm going to help. Did you see that?
everyone for your patience. Um, we are now in open session again, and we have decided that we will have a special meeting on March 11th at 7 p.m. to address issues that were in the executive session that we could not do tonight. Thank you for your patience. We are now moving towards, well, before we move, would everyone do their ratings of the norms, please? Just take a few minutes to do that. And if you are on Zoom, you can send them to Michelle Jarvis and she will keep them confidential. Would you tell us the rating system again, Member Casey? Uh, zero is doesn't meet the standards. One is partially meets, and two is meets. Okay. It doesn't meet one is partially and two meets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, would you entertain a motion to adjourn? I would. So done. All right. Member Casey makes a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. Member Labonte seconds that agenda um, adjournment motion. And I appreciate everybody's patience with me about uh, trying out to be the chair. Um, I will continue to learn and I appreciate everyone's patience. Thank you. Um, should we have a roll call for adjournment? And should we also note that it is not even 10 o'clock? I know. Stop a new again. world record. <laughs> We're doing it. We can do it. Okay. okay. All right. New Northampton record, at least. Number and nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you Did you remember Stein? Yes. Remember? Oh, okay. Member Hennessy. Yes. Member Labonte. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. Member Gazy. Yes. Member Serafie Cox. Yes. Thank you, everybody. And thanks to all who brought snacks tonight. It is, oh, does make a difference. Oh,